the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. In the story of the resurrection, when Jesus came to his disciples, and he came where all the doors were locked, he showed him himself, he showed them his signs and his wounds. And then he breathed into their faces. And that breath of life, he breathed the Holy Spirit into their faces. And here we want to just to compare between two breaths that happened in the Bible. In the first breath, when God took dust and he breathed in the face of that dust, then it became a living human being, a living Adam as the first human being. And the power of the breath of God is still active till now. We're breathing till now as an example, as a, a show of life, as a source of life, as a power of life. And till now, we're still enjoying the power of this breath that is a blessing, be fruitful, fill the earth, subject every living creation. But God wanted human beings at the or his breath to follow the same way that he wanted to create them for. Then God in the uh, Genesis chapter 1, he's saying, let us create human beings, let us create man on our image and the likeness. And this is the same way that it's an image and likeness. It's the image, it's the character of humanity, is what we have, it's um, analytical mind thinking, creativity, uh, holiness, justice, um, eternity. And at the same time, God wanted for us is the vision, the mentality, the way he thinks, the well. And this is what we need to learn. And this is what we need to develop. When Jesus breathed into the face of his disciples, he wanted to give them a new creation. The first Adam, he received the breath. The second Adam is the living spirit. It's the one that who gives life. And that's why Jesus breathed into the, dis the face of the disciples. And that means that he is the source of life. He is the one who gives us the spirit. And that also has a message. In the first message is the power of productivity. And in the second message as well, he breathed into the disciples' face and also received the Holy Spirit with the message, go, preach the gospel. Go tell everyone of the example of Christ. He wanted everyone to show the real living human being, the reality of life, the source of life, he wanted us to come back to our real self and not to the false self. Sometimes we fall into the false self by going through a lot of um, needs that we don't really need. Sometimes we think of economy, power, we think of fame, we think of different things that is not important. And he breathed into the face of the disciples to create a new nature, a new humanity, to restore the real self for every human being. And that's an important message for me, as it might be also for you, to restore your real self. And the, here is the new creation in Christ. The new creation here is just trying to get you out of your false self that you might think that you uh, carry. 
the mask that sometimes we put in our face to please the others, to please the society, is not working. It's sometimes giving us a face that is not, a self that is not ours. And that's why, take off the mask of the society, take off the mask of the others, and come back to your own real self, and you will find the beauty of humanity that is the glory of God in you. He will shine in you, and then you will see your own beauty in him. And that's the creation, the new creation, the new nature in Christ. You see, it's simply like a piece of dough and bread. And this transformation to be a new nature is the same ingredients, it's the same everything, but it's still, it's not the same nature. It's different smells, it's different texture, you can eat it, and a new fresh bread is the new nature in Christ. And that's what we need to come back to it. And this is one side of it. The second side of it is the identity. You change identity. This identity that you want to have is not an identity of relationship with God being a slave, but he is moving us from that kind of imprisonment of the God that is very high, far away, and we want to please him. The new creation is a creation of the sonship, that you become a son and a daughter for him. And this is a beautiful meaning, and the beautiful meaning is an expression of love. Look how much love he gives us to be called children of God. This is a new identity. Whatever kind of identities you may have, whether it's your profession or your um, nationality or your gender or your um, money or whatever, it's all of it is fading. It's not real. It will not stay with you. But one thing is you in him and he in you. You become his and he is yours and that's the identity we are children of god we are the temple of the holy spirit then this is the glory of humanity in us and that's a new creation and this new creation is giving us joy peace and then here we become fruitful the fruits of the word is not exactly what God wanted, but God wanted for us the fruits of the Spirit. In the first creation, it the fruits of the productivity, but in the second creation, it the fruits of the Spirit. It's the love and peace and joy, faith and humility, kindness, self-control. It is the fruits of the Spirit, then you are able to share these fruits of the Spirit. And that's why we need to have that unity in Him to be able to enjoy the new creation. It's the same breath. In the first one is a new creation that He gave us, and the second one, the second one is the, the creation of the Spirit. So we become in him the temple and the glory that he expresses himself through us. And that's why he also would give us this unity with time, unity with the universe. Then we restore our responsibility that he gave us in the beginning. When God created human beings, and he gave them a responsibility to take care of nature, to be responsible for the well-being of every living creation. And that's why it was a glory that God wanted human beings to be his likeness, to be responsible, to care for the nature. And at the same time, 
And the second one as well, when he breathed into his disciples, he gave them this creation, this responsibility, take care of everything, take care of the uh, uh, whole creation, the nature, the environment. But moreover, he gave us another responsibility, forgive. So here, the first one was taking care of the uh, um, environment and the creation. The second one is taking care of the well-being of everything. So if you are in Christ, then you are responsible to forgive, to love. And the love that we have in Christ Jesus will reflect on the nature, on the relationship with one another. The love that we have, the forgiveness that we have in Christ Jesus, we will be able to extend it to everyone. Then, if the love inside us would be enough to express to the others, there will be no enmity in the world. Then here, when he's telling us, love your enemies, do good to them, this is, this is real. This is not just a euphoria or anything like that. It is reality. The reality when you are able to love, you're sending a message of love to the others. The positive power of change in you can heal the weakness on the others, can heal the relationships on the other. Then love will overshadow every relationship. Here is a new creation, a new creation in the unity in Christ, a new creation in the fruits of the Spirit, a new creation in the love and the forgiveness, a new creation for humanity to restore their responsibility to take care of the nature. And then we are able to see the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is in us, is inside us. And if we are not able to see the kingdom of God in us, how could we see the kingdom of God that is coming in the future? The kingdom of God is in us, is in you now. Live it, enjoy it, and extend it to the others. Take care of everyone, take care of yourself, take care of the nature, take care of the environment. It's our responsibility. May the Lord bless you. Glory be to God. Amen.